For Chapter 1 of Shadow Dragon Hard 5 Iron Man, I decide to put Jagan on the fort, in the hopes that he does not get hit by 1% critical, but he does. I then accidentally mess up my unit placements and I get able killed by a pirate. In order to make up for this tremendous loss, I decide to follow the Kids World Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon guide and train Gordon on Gazak by shooting him 250 times with an iron bow. At the end of this grueling training arc, Gordon is now level 16 and he has gained 2 strength. I begin Chapter 2 of my Shadow Dragon Hard 5 Iron Man by recruiting Daros on Turn 1 and getting Drow killed on Turn 2. The level 16 Gordon that I trained last chapter only has 7 strength, but he also has 13 defense and 27 HP. This dummy thick archer is easily able to tank any enemy of this chapter, including the boss. I break Gomez's handbags by hitting it with Gordon's face 30 times. This allows me to train Marth and Caster by attacking this defenseless sack of meat. I managed to get Marth to level 15 and Caster to 17 before the boss dies from a crit. This entire process takes a total of 546 turns. Chapter 3 of this extremely scuffed Hard 5 Iron Man 1 is a complete cakewalk. Marth is capable of one rounding Hard 5 enemies which is frankly so ridiculous that it defies common sense. The boss of this chapter, Hyman, is normally quite dangerous, but only to pathetic mortals who haven't even spent 250 turns at tackling a defenseless boss for EXP. And this is the first and probably last chapter where I suffer zero casualties. Chapter 4 of this cursed Hard 5 Iron Man run begins with me reclassing a bunch of people into archers and forging a wing spear. I call it the dignity so I can make a joke about it when it breaks. The chapter opens with Kane and Borg making the ultimate sacrifice to take down a thief so I can recruit Merrick slightly more conveniently. I also use Kord's soft living body as a shield for extremely minor but ultimately unnecessary tactical benefit and he dies a grisly death. Lastly, I accidentally place Sita in range of mounted archers and I sacrificed Riss and Mathis as distractions, even though she was guaranteed to, to survive. <laughs> we are now at the point where we can start getting replacement characters. At this point, no matter who you are, as, as a, a friend, friend you, you are, are replaceable. replaceable. Farewell. Chapter 5 in this highly skillful Hard 5 Iron Man run introduces Window and the five members of the Wolf Guard. Wolf and Zedgar are infamous for their extremely high growth rates and are a staple of any Hard 5 run. I recruit Wendo and clear most of the map, but I accidentally use my end turn button macro and Merrick becomes a stain on the pavement. I decide to farm the reinforcements for XP, but I get overwhelmed. The Cavaliers and Pegasus Knights mercilessly slaughter half my army and also the entire Wolf Guard. As a result of this massacre, Hardin, Violin, Roche, Agma, Navarre, Daros, Barst, and sadly, Wolf and Senegar have all been laid to rest. Chapter 6 in this Hard 5 Iron Man run rewards us for getting everyone killed with level 14 generic replacement units who are still complete garbage. The main feature of the chapter is a hallway where units can be flanked by large squads of powerful enemies. It is normally quite difficult to get through this area quickly when playing normally, but I overcome this challenge by having no regard for human life. I valiantly utilize human wave tactics, heroically sending Hepto, Unil, Dua, Penvo, Zestu, Trim, Quattro, Rickard, and Julian into the meat grinder to get my victory. Having successfully culled the weak, the next batch of replacement units will be much stronger. Because of my unique playstyle, the requirements for Chapter 6X, the first guide in chapter in this Hard 5 Iron Man run, are easily met. Because the average level of my army is quite high now, I am now blessed with pre-promotes for my replacement units. They come loaded with decent stats and also good weapon ranks. This will enable some interesting strategies in the future, such as having disposable effective weapon wielders. 
After chucking all of the replacement units into the recycling bin, I recruit Athena and debate whether or not to keep her. I choose to decide by setting her into a deathmatch against the boss. If she wins, I will train her up and use her for the rest of the run. Athena gets quite close to defeating the boss, but ultimately loses and dies. What a shame. Chapter 7 of this Hard 5 Iron Man poses two main challenges. The first is an initial charge by a large mass of flying enemies. To counter this, I reclass my generics into bow wielding classes and line them up to form a solid defensive line. I survive the initial charge and my counter attack wipes them out. The second of these challenges are aggressive cavalier reinforcements from the south. I move quickly to occupy those forts and block further spawns. But since the reinforcement logic is weird, I get jump scared by three cavaliers the moment I move off. These surprise cavaliers manage to kill one of my generics, and one of them threatens Wendell with a 70% chance of death, but luckily he dodges. I finish off the chapter by killing off Bantu and recycling my remaining generics to get my deposit back. Chapter 8 in this Hard 5 Iron Man features a very large number of enemies that you would normally use to train Wolf or Sedgar up to level 20. However, since I got them killed on their joining chapter, I cannot fight these enemies properly. I am forced to run through and not get any of that precious precious XP. Roger doesn't even get advantaged by Alcida before succumbing to a severe case of Devil Axe poisoning. Caesar, Rad, and all of my replacement units courageously died to cover my mad dash to the seize point. Chapter 9 in this Hard 5 Iron Man begins just like the rest, with Maladus delivering another cart of hapless idiots who will soon die for my cause. At this point, I have killed enough generics that my death counter needs an additional column. I have also exhausted the 31 unique names for replacement characters so they have looped around and are being reused. Expect this to happen several more times during this run. I recruit the sniper George to get his stuff and then I send him and the generics in a kamikaze attack to soften up the enemy forces. This suicide squad is completely wiped out by the pirates. But after a few close calls and some clever play, I manage to make it out without any major losses. Chapter 10 in this Hard 5 Iron Man features the first promotion item, an enemy vanguard charging in from the west, and a massive number of cavalry and knight reinforcements from the north. I lose two generics dealing with the western squad and force my way into the castle, using hammers on the knights to great effect. I spend two more lives to lure and defeat the sniper squad indoors. Upon securing the castle, I use the first master seal on Castor with a plan to make him into a general in the future. The star player of the chapter is the generic General Octu, who has 22 defense. I use him to fill the choke point at the castle door, to stone the wall of the enemies so I can take them down at my leisure. Soon after clearing the map, Mario and Minerva lose their deathmatch against the boss. I reward my surviving generics for their hard work with a sweet release of death. Chapter 11 of this Hard 5 Iron Man introduces two characters, Lind and Jake. Lind is a low level mage that comes with the aura, a powerful 18 might tome restricted to female users. Jake is a ballistician who can attack at long distances. I lose a decent chunk of my replaceable army on the approach, but I'm able to safely clear most of the map. I recruit Jake and immediately observe his deathmatch against the boss. Not being able to attack at one range, he predictably loses. Lind also loses her match, but I find I have cleared the map too early. With no enemies remaining, I am forced to pay a hefty fee to the arena to handle my garbage disposal. Chapter 12 of this Hard 5 Iron Man features two Master Seals, the Boots, and the second Warp Staff of the game. It also features five defenseless imprisoned units set to be immediately executed by the enemy. This is quite convenient as it will save me the trouble of doing it myself. Thomas, Macklin, Dolph, and Boa are all skewered and roasted alive, but I leave Medea in the safe spot. This rare act of mercy is to ensure that I can recruit Astrum 
in chapter 13 and take his stuff. After clearing the tide of cavalry reinforcements from the east by holding up in the treasury, I distribute my ill-gotten gains. I give Marth the boots, promote Lena into a sage, and feed the remainder of my generics to the Manakee. Chapter 12X is the second Gaiden chapter of this hard five Iron Man, for which the typical entry fee of around two dozen souls is easily met. Given that I have just entered the third generation of generic units, using my second master seal from the previous chapter, I promote Gordon into a sniper. Moving on to this chapter's main attraction is the possibility of recruiting Horus. A mediocre pre-promoted general, I conclude that recruiting him for a single steel lance is not worth the trouble, so I decide to kill him for XP. I provoke his squad into moving by pushing a generic into their collective attack ranges, and inform Princess Nina of the bad news. I don't really feel like making a death reel for all of the generics this time round, so please, just imagine all of them dying instead. Chapter 13 of this Hard 5 Iron Man contains a very large number of enemy balisticians who constantly rain missile fire on you as you approach their machine gun nests. Fortunately, I am no stranger to strategies historically used for these circumstances, and my excellent tactics result in a mere 100% generic unit casualty rate. I recruit Astrim with Medea and mark their contributions to my funds on the death counter. Finally, I recruit Beck, the second balistician in this game. He engages in a sniper battle against the boss, but gets 360 no scoped by a second enemy balistician and dies. Chapter 14 in this Hard 5 Iron Man features the Silver Card, which allows me to buy a large number of cheap items I won't use with the gold I'm hoarding for no reason. By this point, I have passed the 100 unit death mark and have to inconveniently squeeze a third column onto a death counter. Pala and Katria recruit themselves on the orders of Minerva, clearly unaware of the circumstances of her absence. The especially bloodthirsty members of the chat demand that I recruit one of them and make the sisters fight to the death but I decline on the grounds that it is logistically difficult to pull off. I instead send them to fight the boss with iron lances. Chapter 15 of this Hard 5 Iron Man features Garnif, who you cannot defeat. I decide to be <laughs> careful. <laughs> ah, who am I kidding? You know what I'm going to do. Garnif surprisingly only manages to get two kills before he gets a notification on his phone that his favorite VTuber is streaming, so he goes back to his man cave to simp. Lastly, with a heavy heart, I decide to let Wendo go. He actually has worse stats than generic bishops and is holding them back from reaching their full potential. I decide to send him to fight a bunch of mages as part of his retirement package. Chapter 16 of this Hard 5 Iron Man gives you a choice between recruiting Samson, a bad pre promoted hero, and recruiting Aaron, a bad pre promoted paladin. I rejected those answers. Instead, I chose something different. I chose the impossible. I chose to let the thief destroy both their villages and to use Zane as a rocket pro grenade to take down the priest of the fortify staff. After promoting Sheeta, I hide my useful units in the bathysphere, while the generics outside are slaughtered by splicers. In chapter 17 of this Hard 5 Iron Man, I rolled the generic gotcha and pulled Pendrel the Fourth, a level 13 general with 25 defense, which is good enough that I'm considering keeping him. I warp Caster into the throne room to take out the Swarm Bishop and snatch a VIP card with Gordon. I mobilize my generics into a hit squad to take out the two thieves and they manage to secure the warp staff at the low cost of their lives. I accidentally place Sita into the range of a killer bow archer. So I reluctantly warp Penvo the fourth into the hallway to block the attack. The fact that he died for a purpose 
is in itself notable for its rarity. Chapter 17X is the third Gaiden chapter in this Hard 5 Iron Man. It has similar requirements to the previous Gaiden chapters, so the entry fee is no big deal for me. Here, you can recruit Etzo, a pre promoted sorcerer with good base stats and high magic, something typically not present in Shadow Dragon. I stealthily progress the chapter by killing everything in my path and taking all the treasure. I sneak past Etzo and manage to recruit him. My plan for taking down Media safely will require several decent magic users, so he will be a rare addition to the team. Chapter 18 of this Hard 5 Iron Man has a large amount of enemy cavalry charging at you through a wide corridor. I pull another 5 star replacement gear from the Gacha, a generic level 15 sage named Jimenez IV, with 15 base magic, which is actually really really good. I decide to keep him and chain him up. I move slowly and fight the reinforcements, taking hits with my 28 defense caster and 23 defense Gordon. I use this to train Etzo and Jimenez. X shows up and delivers the Mercurius before leaving to join your sisters. After clearing the map, I mess up and accidentally move Etzo in range of two stationary enemy cavaliers near the boss, and he gets decapitated, making all the effort I put into him this chapter completely pointless. Chapter 19 of this Hard 5 Iron Man features a lot of treasure and several shiny plot rocks. By this point, I have reached the 5th generation of generic units but none of the new ones are any good. I move through the map quickly, defeating the enemy heroes by swarming them in the same way the honeybees fight gigantic Japanese hornets. I grab the light sphere and the geo sphere and use a warp charge to catch the thief running away with a star sphere. Since I did not keep Bantu, I am unable to recruit Tiki, so I am forced to put her to sleep permanently. Chapter 20 of this Hard 5 Iron Man features the Resident Camus archetype, in this game known as Camus. I spend 77 grand to forge a longbow with 18 might and 100 hit. This 3 range weapon will be my ace in the hole against tough bosses. I warp caster and some mooks to fight the ballista, then soundly defeat the flanking enemy Bravelands Paladins, using excellent reclass generic heroes armed with devil axes. I claim the Gradivus by having Gordon shoot Camus with Longbow and finish him off with Sita's Wing Spear. When cleaning up, one unfortunate generic unit gets a Double Devil Axe Backfire and one rounds himself out of existence. I grab the hammer and wrap up the chapter by having Lawrence kill my undesired generic before taking him out too. Chapter 20x of this Hard 5 Iron Man is the last guidance chapter that requires to kill most of your own army. It gives us Ymir, who is a warrior with stats comparable to that of a generic. Sadly, I didn't get any good units for the gacha this time around, but I still have a few more rows left in upcoming chapters. I want a few more magic and staff users to add reliability and redundancy to my endgame strategy. I repair the dignity with the hammer, ruining the joke I set up in chapter 4, and after giving it some thought, I decide I am in the market for a disposal missile for our next chapter. So I recruit Ymir for that purpose. Chapter 21 of this Hard 5 Iron Man has a metric ton of enemies, but only two that deal magic damage. I begin by warping a generic onto the secret shop to buy a whole bunch of stat boosters. The two Thorn Mages in this chapter have a 1% crit chance to kill Caster in one shot. This run started with a 1% crit, and I don't plan it for it to end with one, so I take no chances. I am warping Ymir to defeat one Thorn Mage and have Caster kill the other in a guaranteed one shot. The remaining enemies have 4 spray weapons, but also less than 30 attack. Units like Ymir and my unwatched generics become mincemeat, but they do 0 damage to Caster. I spam the end turn button as Caster slaughters the entire enemy army. Chapter 22 of this Hard 5 Iron Man is similar to Chapter 21, except instead of there being 2 threats to a 3 defense general, there are zero. I warp in Caster and watch as he massacres the entire population of Macedon. After Caster kills Michaelis off screen, I turn in the Star Sphere and Light Sphere in order to get the Starlight. The tome requires to defeat Garneth and claim the true Falchion. Chapter 23 of this Hard 5 Iron Man is filled with mages, 
many of who conveniently have 39 HP or lower. In the battle preps, I have Lena snort 10 pounds of spirit dust and give her the starlight. The Geosphere, when used, deals 13 damage to all units on the map. I use it 3 times to cause several major seismic events, destroying both the opposition and also property values in all of Arcanea. I lazily walk over and casually take out the reinforcements before slaying Garneth with a coax up Lena armed with Starlight, just to get a sword that I won't even bother using anyway. Chapter 24 of this Hard 5 Iron Man features many powerful enemies and reinforcements that no one who plays the chapter ever actually fights. We get Ellis at the start of the chapter, who I decide to keep for warp and alm staff usage, and using the forge longbow from chapter 20, I move Gordon a couple of tiles south and shoot and kill the boss for complete safety. I grab the alm staff and staff boosters and then warp more to the seize point to finish the chapter. Since I had the true falchion, I was skipping past guy in chapter 24x and going directly to the end game. The final chapter of this hard 5 Iron Man sees our army split up and face the threats from all sides. We are given Goto, who comes with our 3 to 10 range siege tome. I pass it around between my mages to shoot the enemy ballista and healers multiple times per turn. I use my bishop to warp several characters onto the southeastern force to block reinforcements. I then restore the fire element 12 timeline by using the alm staff to revive Harden. The door is closed and I wait in complete safety until turn 20 when reinforcements stop and I clear the map using the door as a choke point. To save the life of a generic, I warp Harden into range as a distraction. He dies for a second time, recreating the time paradox. I then end the game the way it began by shooting Medias from outside his range to Gordon until he dies. This concludes my Hard 5 Iron Man run of Fire Emblem 11, Shadow Dragon. After a mere 220 deaths, 6 generations of generic units, 2,243 turns, 5 weeks of live streams, 23 hours of gameplay, and 29 daily recap videos, it's finally over. This let's play has taken some wild twists and turns from the start and it's been an exhilarating ride through and through. Thank you all for being with me on this horrifying, horrifying journey. If you haven't already, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you again, and see you in the next one.